Now on the last episode, we degreed the camps and got it all set up good, but that had used rings for mock-ups, so now we installed the brand new piston rings, installed the pistons and show you guys every single detail, and of course, the most important one, we stretched the rod bolts. Here you go, yep. And also we talk about the very important crankcase evacuation system on a B20 that doesn't exist. And we'll talk about the more details on that so you know if you're after efficiency, this is right up your alley. Okay, now here we remove the pistons once again to install the brand new piston rings and here's the block the crank is still installed of course we didn't bother taking it off because it's already completely torqued and here we remo remove the allen plug so that now we can install the fitting for the breather and we'll get to that later and here on the bench here's the pistons yes sir we're gonna remove the rings and then install this the B20 stock bore P3F piston rings because that's what the one-up pistons use or require. So that's easy to replace, right? Whenever you got to rebuild, hey, it's just the CRV piston rings. Easy. Okay, now we put the we invert the order this way. When we start installing it, it becomes easier. Okay, now here we got the oil control rings installed. Now it's the second ring. Alright. Yep, get it installed carefully now. Okay, now we go with the top ring, the compression ring. Sir. So, of course, we clock this before we install it, and you know, we use this, this ATF Mineral Spirits Mix lubricant that we do we use because it helps wear in or in this case break in the piston rings onto the new finished tone of the bore because it's not too slippery but then it's not too harsh that it's dry so it works it works for us so we use this on on almost every engine we build even the vw beetles and you know and the funny thing is the, the cool thing is that with different trends or building techniques did you know that some builders on the VW scene actually install the piston ring to dry? It helps break in, that's why. All right, now let's go to the engine stand. Here you go. And look at this. Look how light the crank turns. Of course, there's no pistons, but hey, look. It just turns freely. That's because it has proper oil clearances. All right, now we turn this. We're going to do this on this side instead of out at the top of on the deck. We're going to lubricate the rod journals. See, look at that, how light that is, right? Yep. So this is going to be an efficient rolling or turning, rotating assembly. Sorry. Okay, we're going to use Torco assembly lube on the rod journals. On each one of them, on all fours, of course. And then we invert it again. And we get ready to install the pistons. All right. There you go. Okay. Now we turn this. We remove the weight. Remove the lock. There you go. Okay. And you turn the block, and it's ready for the piston installation. Sorry. Okay. Now let's go get the pistons. Oh, it's been so light. Let me align it for piston number one, so that it's ready. Okay, there. All right, all right. Let me get the pistons now. Okay, now here we time lapse this. All the the bores are sprayed with WD forty, so it's actually lubricated. And of course, the rings are, you know, have the ATF mixed with mineral spirits that we do. So yep, here you go. As you can see here, I still lubricate each rod bolt once I hand tight it because later we're gonna stretch it out. Here you go number three. Yep, okay. The rod caps and ARP lube, yes sir. All right, 
Now on the last one, turn it, number four piston. All right, there you go. Yes, sir. All right, that's complete. Yep, yep. Okay, now let's go stretch the rod bolts. But you know, if you're liking this, hit the like button because it helps spread out the video to a wider audience. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because you know we're going to keep pushing good stuff now. And all right, here we are. We loosen the rod bolts and make sure it's at zero. This way, when we torque it to 28 feet pounds torque, we get to 0 0.0050 to 55 as ARP suggests. And we got that on all of it. All right, that's cool. Yep, and look at that. It spins really, really good and really well, right? Yes, sir. That's gonna be ready to rock and roll. And also, while we have micrometers and dial bore gauge to check proper bearing clearances, you can also check it with a plastic gauge. And we actually do that to double check it before final assembly. And we have a video on that and you can click here or it'll, it'll actually, actually be in the description below. So you can check it later. And it's all about plastic gauging and how to do it and what you do. So it helps you guys along the way as you build your own engines. Or, you know, just to make sure how we build it properly so you can go to us, right? Yeah. And also a video about piston rigs, you can check it here, or of course it's gonna be in the description below. It'll give you some good ideas on how it works and some tricks that you could probably do or use to make more power or gain efficiency. So that's really worth watching because it's also related to crankcase evacuation. And that's what we're gonna check now, but let's, talk about this and also before that let's go to the workbench first let me talk about something good okay now here is the here's the head of oh, this is max b16 head okay so there's a drain here 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 and there so there's four oil drains to the block and oil comes in from this VTEC solid all feeding all the rocker arms locks in with VTEC. So it's in VTEC, don't think it's not spraying oil, it's still spraying oil because there's clearances and the oil is coming from here from the block from the oil jet and feeds the cam rails. And if you look under the cam rail, it has holes, it sprays oil onto the rock arms, even the cams. So the normal oil level is here under normal driving. But if you finish first, second, third gear, and even fourth gear up to 9,000 RPM, this might be overfilled and it's not being able to drain. Why? Because of crankcase pressure. Because crankcase pressure from, pressure from the block is trying to escape upwards through the valve cover breather. So that is why I don't usually run a valve cover breather, but on the block, yes. Now, I'm not saying running a valve cover breather is wrong. You know, we might have haters trying to say what they say. The thing is, some people or a lot of people are worried about running a crankcase breather from the block because from the valve cover, they start spewing oil, right? So they think if it's from the block, it's going to spew more oil because it's slower. But in reality, it's avoiding the proper oil drain because the crankcase pressure from the block is trying to go up. Now let's head to the block and let me show you something, okay? Now let's say there's minimal blow-by, right? But on the movement of the pistons, look at this, all right? Okay, now let's say piston number one here, let's set it up. Okay, here. Let's say piston number one fires, right? And so all these three are passengers. They're, they're weight the piston number one is carrying. So, okay, now let's see. Now, as the piston number two and three goes up, the volume under has to move. So now we go down again, it gets pushed down and it pulls up to piston number one and four. So when you think about it, all that movement, add the blow by, that needs to breathe. And so if the oil drain is getting filled up with lots of oil, how is this going to breathe out of the valve cover, right? So for me, I prioritize putting a breather on the block first before the valve cover. Of course, running both is really helpful, but the block first before the valve cover. 
It's just that sadly, it's easier to put a breather on the valve cover. Plus, it also looks cool. So for the hard parkers, they op they pop the engine bay. It's gonna be like, whoa, nice engine, dude. So you know, but that does not mean it's a proper way, or you know, it's a complete setup because a lot of them don't have the block breather simply because they're worried it might spew oil. But the cause is totally different, right? This is the four drain goes up. So, you know, okay. Now let me show you. We're going to install the fitting for the breather here. All right. Well, of course, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hand tighten it just to show you guys. But, you know, after this, we tighten it properly and put a bit of Honda bond or even three bond to make sure there's no potential leaks right there. Ouch, that hurts. Okay, there you go. Now it's ready to have a fitting tightened there to a hose all the way to the breather. So this way the oil drain can get, can drain. It doesn't get pushed up by the crankiest pressure from the bottom end. So that's going to help. It actually helps windage. You know, it lessens the windage loss of an engine. So even if the pist each piston is firing, all the other three are just, you know, passengers, right? So this lets it create more power efficiently, right? And so I hope that helps my friend Rafael Alexander who's been talking to me in the SRD Motorsports page and has been having issues about oil on the breather. So this is a good solution. So I hope this helps you and let me know what happens after, all right? So then we can start with the tuning lessons because this dude repairs ECUs really well. And here, let me show you a little further, Alexander. On B16s, this part here is the black box and this part here is already is still plugged. So you have to remove this in order to, to put the fitting for a breather. And you can actually remove even the black box to have two fittings, but you can leave the black box so it still works with the PCV system. And then this other one here relieves the crankcase pressure in full throttle because in full throttle, there is no vacuum in the intake manifold. So it's not pulling crankcase pressure. That's probably why it's filling up the valve cover and spewing out oil. So you got to do this to help alleviate the pressure. All right. And that is is going to be cool because... Alexander has an 84 or 85 millimeter bore B16 block. So that's a big bore B16. So that's pretty awesome. And so next up is what we're going to have their head resurface. So that's ready for final assembly and slap it on to the block because the block is really good and really ready. Right. And of course, we're going to show you updates on the intake manifold and what we changed and how we're making the Skunk 2 Pro Series more efficient to make it work really good with this B20 VTEC that's owned by Mac. So hey, it's gonna be really good, right? So you know you gotta subscribe because you can, we keep pushing good content like this and a playlist of the end screen. But of course, as soon as the next episode finish, you can also click that here.